Hey, podcast listeners. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcast? Good news. With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Stay up to date on everything newsworthy by downloading the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash ad-free news. That's amazon.com slash ad-free news to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Hey, moms, looking for some lighthearted guidance on this crazy journey we call parenting? Join me, Sabrina Kohlberg, and me, Andy Mitchell, for Pop Culture Moms, where each week we talk about what we're watching and examine our favorite pop culture moms up close to try to pick up some parenting hacks along the way. Come laugh, learn, and grow with us as we look for the best tips and maybe a few what not to do's from our favorite fictional moms. From Good Morning America and ABC Audio, Pop Culture Moms. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. My father was uh, a runaway. If he didn't feel he couldn't handle something, he would leave. He would leave for a day or something. But that's also where the enemy opens up the door. That's how cheating happens. That's how you go talk to your friends because that's easier because they're going to be on your side. And it just opens the door to really bad things. So for me, that's triggering for my mom. That's triggering. So she knew in our family to not split us apart. Uh, no. Ooh, that's better, right, babe? Yeah! Yeah. She founded an architectural concrete company. He founded a hundred million dollar clothing company. She took the world by storm as a social media star. He took the world by storm as a famous serial entrepreneur. Together we started a business. And had babies. Now we're figuring out the best ways to do both. Join us as we learn from other entrepreneurs going through the same life struggles. As they share their life hacks about success, love, kids. And everything in between. It is hard to fail, but it is worse never to have tried to succeed. Quote by Theodore Roosevelt. At the end of the day, we can endure much more than we think we can. Quote by Frida Kahlo. Welcome to the Pretty and Punk Podcast. My name is Dan Caldwell, and I'm here with my beautiful co-host and lovely wife, Ildiko Ferenzi. How are you guys doing this week? And we got a great podcast for you guys. Actually, we got better than that. We have a new 10-part series on divorce-proofing your marriage, especially... <laughs> For entrepreneur parents, and we this is something that it That's just all parents, I think. Well, I mean, you all know what? It will absolutely work for all benefit. people who are married, but we are looking through the lens of being parents and entrepreneurs, and so there's sometimes specific challenges that come with that. And we're like in these, we're in times, we're in these special times, these uh, that people are coming after your marriage, that people are preaching about getting divorces, you're looking at these YouTube channels and people are talking about how if for one little problem, for one little thing, let's get a divorce, let's because your spouse is walking away or because you're uncomfortable or because, he, you know, a certain word was said or whatever it might be that people are not trying to keep their marriages together anymore. It's the simple way of the simple antidote becomes let's get a divorce Mm -hmm. and it just people are not working hard enough on their marriages and the enemy is on the attack and so we feel like there's so much more that can be done to keep that marriage together and we want to talk about hey things are not easy for us either we're we go through stuff but yeah everybody everybody goes through this stuff and we want you just to know that you're not alone, that we are dealing with those same challenges, that mm-hmm. it's not always easy for us. And don't let the enemy put... Wait, before we get into that. But before we jump into that. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Pretty and Punk Podcast. And if you are, and you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, it just takes a second. It means so much to us because it really helps the podcast get out there. To more listeners like you guys and if you know anybody it might help and you can send it to them we really appreciate that too 
We also love and appreciate your reviews. Even the babies look forward to them every day. If you share this episode on social media today, don't forget to tag us. We want to celebrate you because we know it's not easy being a parent in business. And the way that you juggle things makes you a superhero. That's worth a shout out. Together, we have a community of our personal followers as well. And we just want to put it out there. We want to show everybody that this juggle is possible. And you are our family. And we're so proud and grateful to have you a part of this family. So don't forget, the sh- all the links are below in the show notes. And thank you again. And let's get back to the show. In any strong relationship, guys, open communication is that cornerstone that keeps the trust and intimacy and unity alive. So think of it as a bridge that connects your hearts, allowing your thoughts and feelings to pass freely. Because without this bridge, that's when those misunderstandings and unresolved issues can quickly lead to distance and resentment. And then all of a sudden, the D word starts coming up after years of that bad habit of not communicating properly. So I think you can guess this episode is about prioritizing open communication with your spouse. And this is so important. And I know it's it's easier to walk away or not talk about it because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't always feel good to have an open communication have that open communication and express your feelings freely and then after a while what happens is you don't feel safe sharing anymore because you don't want to have the fight or the explosion or have someone walk out on you or threaten, listen, if we're going to talk about this, I'm out. I'm going to leave and then I'll come back. So it's almost more comfortable to just not have the conversation. That leads to hate. It leads to separation, like not separation as in divorce yet, but it it, there's distance. It's building distance and the enemy loves that and he's planting the way that you react and making you feel comfortable with with acting that way. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it's it, yeah, when as you start to grow and it helps you well, it it leads you to growing apart. And mm-hmm. yeah. it, when you start to grow apart, you start to lead your own lives, two different lives because yeah. one person doesn't I mean it is easier. I mean, it I'm is. A, I have to fight that feeling sometimes because I'm a loner. Uh-huh. I, I like to be within my own feelings and 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 thoughts, and sometimes I like going on walks by myself, and and so I I that becomes my default, and right. I have it takes work to go. I can't do that all the time because I have you have to, to turn guard into somebody you. else's heart and their mental health and their emotions. Well, and because they I may... know you are more about connectivity. Well, I just like to get things out of the way because I don't like that toxic synergy. A lot of families have it where they've had things in the past and they just pretend it never happened and they sweep it under the rug. And what happens is you all know it happened, but you've never had the conversation. So it's this toxicity and it's everybody happy and chipper, but underneath it actually is destroying your, you, you can't help but to think of someone in a certain way, but you can never say it. You know what I mean? Right. And in my family, I feel like we were really encouraged. If something's bothering you, you just say it. It may not be comfortable. It may not, it may escalate a little, but in the end, we're going to work through this and you come to me. And, and, and I, we never had a safe word in my family, but I know a lot of, of people that I, because we work with a lot of families and what helps them is a safe word for perhaps, I don't know, make it up marshmallow or, or care bear. And you say the safe word first. So you know that a hard topic is coming up. Perhaps it's something new coming clean with something well, or I think something it's, that's I think happened it's even better in the to past. have physical touch there, you know, holding each other's hands when you right. start to have that conversation. Well, I mean, yeah, I it, mean, the, yeah, I it, mean, it I wouldn't mind <laughs> some people blow up. So that would be 
scary, but I mean, and those are things you have to, you have to, you have to fight those emotions and you have to realize that's not coming. That's not coming from God, those emotions. That's not going to help the situation at all. Yeah. I mean, you have, if, if two people, sometimes the communication isn't easy to have, uh, or, or the, a conversation isn't easy to have mm-hmm. when the topic is, is, uh, can be triggering to one side or the other. And right. For one side, it may not be triggering at all, but for the other side, it can side, be therapeutic. Right. You, you know, that person needs to talk about this yeah. situation where the other person is feeling like they don't want to talk about the situation right. because it's triggering and, and that can easily be turned into a fight and, right. and having, I think, I think for me, connectivity when you're hold rather than a safe word, I think holding hands or something that calms your soul a little bit. So you feel like you can't. You're scary sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. Hey, yeah, but I've also clocked. grabbed your hand and said, look, we're on the same side. When yeah, we start see, that's to get, better. That so, makes so me feel safe. So if you're holding your hands from the start, because yeah, I can be, I sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm in this, I'm stressed out and I don't want to talk about something because I feel like it's just going to make me more stressed out and I want to, I just need a moment, you know, I just, and I've told you before, I need, I need time. I can't talk about this right now. Yeah. And for some people, and I, I get that now, but just, I I remember like in the beginning, you definitely were a runaway guy. Oh, at the beginning I was for sure. Run away. And then especially from my background, my mom would never abandon me. She would never, ever, ever, you know, split the pa- family apart. But that was also a trigger for her because my father was uh, a runaway. If he didn't feel he couldn't handle something, he would leave. He would leave for a day or something. But that's also where the enemy opens up the door. That's how cheating happens. That's how you go talk to your friends because that's easier because they're going to be on your side. And it just opens the door to really bad things. So for me, that's triggering. For my mom, that's triggering. So she knew in our family to not split us apart. We, and that was really important for her to never split us apart. Even to the day when she was ill, ill, and she wanted us out there, but we were dealing with COVID and we had to deal with stuff. We were in and out of town, but she said, you don't come by yourself. You always, always, always stick together because she's been there. She's lifted. Yeah. She's, she's lived it. Well, that was lifted. a hard time there. there You couldn't even go into Canada unless you stayed you for two weeks. You had to quarantine. Weeks. So it, it, but for her, she's like, you come when you're all together because she knows what happens when families split up innocently, even, Hey, come over here and innocently things happen. Suddenly there's cheating or addictions and something can happen. So I feel that it's triggering, especially when you're feeling hate or animosity towards your spouse to just walk out. So for me, that's triggering. For some people, no. They're like, get the heck away from me. Yes, just leave. That works for you. I just don't see it being a good thing. But yes, have your space, but communicate freely. Don't just disappear for a day or two and then come back. Oh, that is horrible. not healthy. Yeah. You have to communicate. That's, that's immaturity hey, I've gone, because you can't, if you can't keep yourself yeah, together yeah. for that long. You can go to a different part of the house and then come back and then do that physical touch thing or, or you know, having the safe word or what ever seems to, because every family is different. Everybody's had different fears. Everybody's had different traumas. Everybody has had different experiences. So you need to be open to these things. And if you've had things in your past, please be open and share them. Because when you share those stories, a lot of the way you handle things while you're healing as an adult it helps to make sense for your partner so that they can lean into you and truly be open for that gateway, uh, the opening of the gateway of communication. Yeah, I I think just speaking about it, when you just speak it Mm -hmm. openly, sometimes that can be, 
therapeutic for you because right. you're having that conversation where you've been bottling all of that up mm-hmm. and being able to speak about it openly. I mean, because yeah. my immaturity, even I mean, I'm just shoot. I was I wasn't I shouldn't even be immature <laughs> at, at an older age, but I was yeah, but that, in that parts of my life when we first moments. got married. I think I had this immaturity of, uh, and I don't know know exactly why. I just was used to being in control of everything yeah. and certain things I was, I was compartmentalizing as I can't, I, I don't, I haven't you know, figured this piece out yet. Right. And so I would, and I would hold it and I not want to talk about it's it. It's all learning. But I do remember you saying something about, and this was, uh, it was just, I don't know if you remember, but maybe you've said it a couple times or more, but just make my, you're supposed to make my life easier not harder. <laughs> and I was like, well, that was true. That was a true statement. I'm like, like, I need to somebody to make my too. life easier here. It, I feel this too, but I wouldn't, I don't understand because everybody in your life around you is so much more difficult. So because they're difficult to deal with, I have to be easier to deal with. <laughs> well, the, I, I think because but I, know, it was them, just I can put vote. them in their place, you know, I can fire somebody or set, yeah. send them off, you know, and get another person. I can get, I can get the person I need to handle that job uh-huh. and without having difficulty, you know, I'm trying to make the whole point of running when you're running a business and if you're comparing these well if they're stressing you out you can fire them you get rid of them right Right. it's like this is a problem child they're not doing what i need them to do they're causing me more problems than they're worth and so it's time to get rid of that person and and get somebody who can run that effectively and then you'd say i'm out of here and i'd be like but okay, I never fine. meant I'm out of I here. I know I meant- that's not what you meant because later, you know, when we were doing therapy and even through Tony Robbins, it was like this very, this, this was so important for me to hear because when I'm out of here, I'll never forget the night <laughs> that my dad, not that he was out of there, but he said he'd be back. And that was the final night, which I didn't quite understand because I was really young. But he told me he'd be back and everything's going to be okay. And he left and it was never okay. And it was never the same ever. And And um, I I didn't realize you had that pain. I didn't, I wasn't. It was so painful. Even just the words. It triggered some something within me where I just wanted, almost wanted to like get down on the ground and like grab, don't leave me. But that's just the inner. Why am I getting emotional? But like, so little words can be so triggering. And even though that's not not what's actually happening, and I would never get down on my knees and grovel, but maybe the little girl in me would if I would have known what happened, what would have happened that night that everything was supposed to be normal again. Oh, I, I can. I, I mean, definitely I specifically would remember. Have probably grabbed him and said, "No, don't leave me." I and I and you know be naive I didn't realize the I didn't put those two pieces together and realize that this is why you were going through this right I can remember you standing in front of the door (laughs) and I just wanted to walk around outside and calm myself down like okay we're you know this is before we were married and I was just like not in a good place I was dealing with a bunch of stuff and I just I, I remember Crazy just wanted to walk out the door. I just wanted to walk out the door. <laughs> let me go breathe. And I said, I got to get out of here. And you like Probably stood in front the of the door. Like you're not words. leaving. You're not leaving. <laughs> because We're I having thought this maybe out. in my head that that's, that's forever. But, you know, with all the, we've invested, I don't understand where this is even coming from. So it was your own triggers of something leading you to say that. And it tr- triggered me. But then when we uh, were doing that therapy and they were saying, listen, it doesn't matter how big the argument is, how this, it could be the biggest monster in the room, but you have to assure each other that say there's a vehicle and you have to assure each other, even if you go for a little break or, or just even if your spouse has that issue at that time. My issues aren't like that anymore. Sometimes I'm like, okay, just just go, just get out of here. I don't care. But um, at that time, 
And this was so helpful. So you visualize the vehicle. We're, we're not leaving the vehicle. We're staying in the vehicle. No matter how bad it is, no matter how bad it is, we are not leaving this vehicle. And well, that I, I, I think it it's makes about communication. C- the fact that confirm that it's t- we're a team. If I talk to you and I say, "Look, um, I'm very frustrated right now, and I'm dealing with a lot, and I just need ten minutes to breathe. I yeah, just let and me just walk figure around. Out how to I'll be back in ten minutes, <laughs> and and then we can have that conversation. The problem right. is, is when you don't have that part of the conversation, and, then you and don't know what's going on in the way right. that you think I'm leaving. I'm I'm not going to come back for two days or something, which I would never do. And that would you know that you if you have that conversation, then you're okay. You become okay with me going okay. I can deal with t- 10 minutes and then we'll finish the yeah, conversation. Yeah, because I know now I would rather have that than you explode and say things that you can't take back. And that's, you got to be careful, guys. If you need that moment, you have to take that moment because words are more, especially for women, they'll never forget it. And you know what I'm talking about. You'll never, ever forget it. You'll literally have a dream about it and you'll wake up and you'll be grumpy and they'll be like, what? And there, were, and there were probably remember times when, when I you said, said those this. Things. Remember when you said this? Uh, there were this. definitely times and when I said some And it'll bring it up. And it's sometimes and words are so much powerful than if you were to just punch someone in the face. Not that that's wrong because obviously you'll go to prison and, <laughs> and never see your family again. But I'm just saying physically sometimes it's easier to hurt yourself physically than to hear words from someone you love and not understand how they could say those things. And again, that's not, that's not God speaking through you. That's the enemy. And the one thing that really, really worked for us is praying, praying together. Oh, that absolutely it is so intimate everything. and most people don't do it. I'm not, I'm not sure why maybe it's embarrassing or it's just so intimate, but it is so beautiful. And that's one of our challenges for our couples is start praying together and pray for the things um, pray for your spouse. Yeah. Pray for the things that you wish for your marriage that you could work on, that you could do together to build this, this marriage. Because I'm telling you, the enemy is after marriages. It, I just have to jump in for one second because this is bothering me so bad. I was watching an Instagram post about how it said, divorce is heartbreaking, but not for my family. Okay. And there was this woman so happy. Um, and I thought it was her new spouse. So she's with her kids, they're traveling the world and they're doing all these events. And I, I don't remember who this is and maybe you guys have seen it, but it bothered me so, so bad because I was like, Oh, well, she's having a really good life with her, her new husband. That's, that's great. That doesn't, you know, that that's good. That's good. Her children look really happy. But then I read the print and it was her husband that she divorced from because they don't have a new spouse yet. But I just felt really disturbed because why try to normalize this? Because in the moment when she finds a new spouse, or he finds a new spouse, they're not going to be gallivanting and holding hands and doing this stuff in front of their children. They're saying they're living a healthy divorce for their children. But I I mean, it just caught me off guard thinking, hold on, why don't you just work on your flipping marriage? Because you guys are so flipping cute together. But in a minute, when he finds another gorgeous wife that loves him, I don't think she's going to want you gallivanting around with him and holding hands and piggybacking. And it's it's just going to get very complicated. So don't make everybody think that, wow, see, they had a great divorce because they don't have other spouses yet. It's never going to be the same. Right. You know, and and especially when she gets a, a, a new man, He may not even want this guy in the picture. Things get very ugly. We work with lots of couples. So I just want, if you guys are looking at this video that's totally viral and everybody's applauding them and they're not, they don't have new spouses yet. So 
If anything, I, I, I literally did a little prayer. Please, God, please help them to, to find whatever had separated them and just have them come back together. That would be the best thing for them and for their kids because I see the magic in them. But I'm telling you, their new spouse isn't going to want that magic well, around. I mean, sometimes... Your are, spouse is number one once you have a new spouse. Are, so Are they putting it up to show people th- that you know, something that, you know, to build this facade that everything that is divorce okay, is but, fine. It's, but it's not and, okay. And everybody says okay. that divorce is a nightmare, but it's, it's not. And, and I, I understand just, uh, when there's, there's I get it. physical in the problems, first, like that there's people, right. you know, hurting p- other, their spouse or something. Mm-hmm. There's reasons for divorce, right? There's times where things cannot work yeah. and, because of, you know, uh, uh, physical but abuse way, or whatever that might be. But the way or that they were... Right. See, and that's the thing that makes me think it probably wasn't physical abuse. It probably wasn't abuse towards the children because they were living... I mean, they're, they they're still piggybacking, together, holding hands. Yeah. Um, she was going to some so red what was carpet. It? You know, what could it be? I don't know. And that's what I was, I was curious about. And I was like, does it even matter? If they're so happy like that, look at their children. They Can't are they happy. Can't they find a way to make it Can't work? Can't you just find a way to work rather than glamorizing divorce? So anyway, it just bothered me. And I know that it's t- totally cut cut the... Um, the the. But I'm just saying that there are so many things that you can do to... Di- to to avoid it because I'm telling you it is not it is not a fairy tale it will not be the same and it's it's definitely not going to be like that my, my my dad had someone else and it I just that it would no no absolutely not his new wife absolutely I couldn't even I couldn't even get out of the the car side of my dad's I had to come out of her car side and and there's a lot of different things that happen when you remarry. Like it's just, it's not going to be the same. So let's talk about some of the things in, um, when you're having open communication, what are some of the things that are important? Uh, like tone, tonality. Oh, tonality is so important. And, and you know, blaming others, you know, blaming each other. No, you can't. It's like, we got to be more creative. Rather than you, you come with I. And sometimes if you can incorporate we in there. And creative criticism. To remind it's a a team. Yeah. I mean, you guys are in this together. I hate the word criticism, but but yeah. But it happens. It happens. I mean, the whole point of having an argument sometimes is where you're you're upset because you're not being seen or because you're you're something's not happening in the relationship right. and you need to talk about and it and that's like but, how do we make this happen well when you come up you say i've been feeling really or listen i really need to talk to you because this is bothering me it's been bothering me for a day it's been bothering me for that's years that's exactly how that's a great way of coming up and when we haven't come up to each other like that it obviously doesn't turn out as well. Right. Absolutely. When it becomes so are, a blame game, you know, like, oh, why do you keep leaving this out? Or why is this, a, you know, I, I'm yeah. usually on the the other end of that. <laughs> like, why are you not cleaning this? Or why are you dirtying this? Something like that I did. <laughs> and, and and when I get, I don't know, I just, I guess I do that a lot. I don't know. But, <laughs> it's a guy thing, I think. But I'm... It's a guy thing because I'm a hey, work in progress. As, as women, okay? we handle everything, I'm and then a work sometimes, in sometimes we don't say a word and we just handle everything. And then one day, all of a hey. sudden, it's like, uh, you know what? I, I can you just like? Do I have to tell you every single time? Hey, it hasn't been that long since make, I lift the toilet seat. Can you make my up. life easier? Yeah. At least you don't got to tell just, me to lift the toilet seat up anymore. Oh, dear. Well, Look. you can do whatever you want. It's your bathroom. <laughs> well, you know, should no, no sharing. Now I got my own bathroom. You can so, do what you want. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that worked. That strategy worked. <laughs> so, yeah, there's so just having that type, when you have that type of communication, being careful about tonality and mm, blaming. Yeah, that's um, good. Getting better at that. Ne- one thing we never bring up, we never, ever, ever in our relationship, and even since the beginning, because I've always, I've always believed in marriage, I always thought it was important, and it always was important to me, um, to never bring up the word divorce. And 
it should never be a conversation that's on the table for no. us. By the time when you start saying that, you're already there. You're already there. Well, I when feel like your words are so powerful. It's there. And yeah, you bring it into it the relationship. It brings it in. And then in the back, how can you not help but prepare? I mean, it, for me, the words, I'm out of here, for me, that would prepare me. And I didn't mention this earlier. And yes. when I talk to a, not a lot of other women or even men, because it's sometimes it's just a word that you say but it triggers something in the back of your head that says, okay, now I hate him. Um, that way that'll make me feel safe because if I don't love him anymore, this won't hurt. And what things can I do so that this doesn't hurt? Okay, you know what? And just not even, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to care, but that's creating distance. So that's a very dangerous thing to play on. So when you bring up the D word, I don't even like to bring it up. But when you bring up the D word, it will cause something in the back of your head to start preparing. Could it even cause you to start being friendlier with strangers or looking at your Rolodex to see, well, if that does happen, then maybe I could fall back on this person. This is like worst case scenario, but I'm just saying, don't even bring it up because you don't even want someone to crazily start Thinking like that. Yeah, I think one of the because things, that's the just conversations that we had, failure. one of the conversations that we had that helped me realize that me wanting to get away for a second, which in my head, I was just like, I just I need just 10 need minutes air. to breathe. But yeah. you took it, I might as well have said, I want a divorce, I'm out of here. Yes. And that's how and I so heard I it. Didn't, yeah, that's how you heard it. Mm-hmm. Because that you were going through, you have these daddy issues that you were dealing with. <laughs> yes. And 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 I didn't understand that because it in my head there was no way that divorce was on the table. Right. It wasn't it was a it was a simple <laughs> disagreement, you know. But when I said But it was much it turned yes. into much something I don't wanna, much bigger sometimes in I, my heart. And I, yeah. Right or wrong, guys, sometimes I don't want to say things that I don't mean. And so my way of taking a 10 minute breath is it's going to think about listen, how to communicate. Yes, How properly. do I communicate this with her so that it isn't an argument because it's most of the time it's something kind of stupid and it's or it, small. not stupid for you. Not, yes, not small. stupid for not the stupid. other person. Yes. But. Very important to the other person. And we don't person. say that word because kids are listening. Right. Um, very important for the other Silly. person. And yes. I just wanted to get it right. And I didn't want to say things I didn't mean. And I didn't want to raise my voice. So it was a way of, for me to calm down. And if your partner understands that, mm. and, and Ildiko definitely knows that about me now, <laughs> she knows I just need 10 minutes to calm myself down yeah. and figure out the best way to communicate and fix this problem. And listen, because guys, we try to fix things too much. Sometimes we just need to listen. And many times... Or it's sometimes shut it down because you exercise. don't want to, because it is hard. It is hard to listen. Sometimes you want to shut it down because it, it is triggering. So it's definitely an exercise to work on. Um, and, and that's, that's the number one, share your feelings honestly, but gently speak mm-hmm. your truth, but with a tone of care and focus on expressing, not blaming as Dan mentioned, and to keep the conversation constructive, always have it going in a positive way, climbing that ladder, walking up those stairs to the goal. The and goal also that not you guys interrupting have. is really yeah, important. That's, that's hard. I know when you're in the heat of the moment, try to not interrupt and let someone finish their thought because that's that's important shutting it down it, it's painful it's painful bo- for both sides of the party and one of the things that we don't do this but because we we know how that we try to do our best to not interrupt each other and have each, let each other have our our space. our space and have that conversation get that point out that they're trying to make yeah but i know people have a conversational rock <laughs> where in other <laughs> words whoever's holding the rock gets to speak uh-huh. and uh and so and you can do that in family time too so if you feel like you need to do something like that that means you can't talk unless you have the Why rock did I remember just when they used visualize to... some someone running with the i'm not done yet <laughs> <laughs> running around running. the house. Give me the rock. <laughs> Give me the rock. It's my turn. I, 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 I liken it to when when they cut the mics off in the debate <laughs> between oh the presidential gosh. debate. You know, it's oh, like, dear. hey, 
give each other that time to get out the what they need to say and then when they yeah. hand that rock over they're like okay it's your turn what is what is your yeah. response it's important to be f- and you to can feel that. heard it's 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 a it's a diff- it's I a different it kind corny. of love and it's a gift to to give someone that opportunity to feel heard and and I understand that especially being a mother especially when you're dealing Daniel not so much he's really great but sometimes you have a hard time putting your thoughts into words and my little girl, she has it. She has big emotions sometimes. And and sometimes it's not even, she can't get it all out. But just wrapping my arms around her and I just whisper in her ear, I'm here for you. I know. I, know. I understand. I'm here for you. Just take your time. And you can literally feel their body soften. And you can use those tactics in your marriage and with your children, of course. Yeah, another thing is making some time throughout the week to have those conversations. Mm-hmm. I, I know. Oh yeah, checking in growing with each up, other. That's we important. used to have uh, family nights uh, in my family where we would have those conversations and and do other things, activities together and stuff. But you know, having that co- time with your spouse, yeah. where I, and I try to ask you every morning, "Are you doing okay? Is everything good?" I mean, it's. I know it sounds. I it's more natural because you have you're going through some physical issues some medical issues too that and so i'm making sure every day because i know you're going through something every day yes and so (laughs) i'm asking to make sure hey how's your health today you know how are you feeling today yeah Um, and it's funny because sometimes i just don't even want i don't want to talk about it you like you did this morning and i know you were going through some stuff (laughs) this morning and i could see it in your face and so me hey, asking Joe. you was just wondering, hey. you know, how are you doing? But that can be I for for how's the week going too? You know, mm-hmm. what are you going through? What is is there anything I can help you with? Guys, we can always ask, is there anything I can help you with? It's so easy to do. I know yeah. sometimes you feel like it's a stretch, but it's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, just I, ask, I love the check. Is there anything I can help you with this week? Is there anything yeah. that you need help with? Even when we're going through so much, we feel like somebody should be asking us that. When you ask that to your spouse, it will be reciprocal. It will come mm-hmm. from your spouse. It may not the first month or the second month or the third month, but it will come. There will be a time when it's reciprocal between, between you two. And you find yourself both asking each other at certain points in the week or the month, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do to yeah. help you out? Well, and with our with our family and growing up, we had the we of course had family days, but we had family meetings, and that was once a week. And usually, that was on Sundays after church. We would check in with each other. Uh, what was the best part of the week? What we could have done better? And if there was some, and I do this especially if if say Daniel or Destiny has. Uh, you know, there's sometimes they, they're at that age where they make not not the best decisions and, and, and then they learn from it. And we, we talk about it. How could I have, how could I have handled this situation better? How could you have handled the situation better? And it leads to such a great conversation. So I love that. And family meetings. And then of course, family meetings between your spouse. And then the last thing. Building each other up. It's super important. Yeah. Like having positive words. It's such a part of everything that we do every day. Mm. I mean, we have... And, and guys, this is, I know this sounds corny and there's so many times that people say things that they're not actually doing. And we try to tell you when we're not actually doing stuff that we, that we're saying, it's like, it's a great idea, Mm -hmm. but, and sometimes we don't, we do other things and, uh, you know, us kind of like having conversations, we have conversations every day about how each other are doing. So Mm -hmm. we don't, we don't actually have a planned meeting but we say well, it every we day. Do. We, we do. But we say it every day. Well, we in our prayer meetings we do that. So I think what about being positive is we have we have programs playing in the background every day for our kids about positive messaging and motivation and and prayer and how to get closer to God and these things that are so important in our family. And when you're doing those things with your kids, when you're having those conversations with your spouse, those things will permeate throughout your relationship. And it's, 
I think that that's kind of where what we're doing and what works for us Mm -hmm. is to keep it a part of everything that you do. It's in our prayer. It's in our conversations at night. It's in our conversations in the morning. It's playing. It's the books that we read. It's the these motivational videos that we're playing in the background and on off the, YouTube. Yeah, in and the it's the things we day. don't watch. It's the things we don't listen to. It's the things we guard our family against. And you got to do that. You got to watch out because um, there's a lot of negative messages and words in songs, in movies. You have to really guard yourself. And I also wanted to, to share Ephesians 4.29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So that is so important. Oh, I love that one. You know, that's that. I mean, that could be spoken today by a Tony Robbins or whoever. Mm, that, I mean, yeah. that is a that is a perfect. The good book verse. has all the lessons, and the best it's self help book in it's the world. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's so important. So all of these things. So, guys, again, and and of course, don't raise your voice. Um, this this is try not to raise your voice in anything that you do with your spouse. Mm. Um, it will keep the conversations. Uh, so much more productive and um, I hope you got something out of this today prioritizing open communication with your spouse remember this is a 10 part series and your series. children and your children and your children and in your business with dealing with with your employees or whatever you're doing um, but this is so important for keeping your relationship strong um, this is the first of a 10 part series So I hope you guys continue to listen. I hope you guys got something from this message today. And if you guys have questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. And we will catch you guys next week. Yes. God bless you guys. We love you. (laughs) I have a baby in my lap. I have a baby in my lap. I'm so glad you were able to be with us for the Pretty and Punk podcast today. We thank you so much for watching. God bless. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for uh, listening to the Put In Punk podcast. I hope you got something from today's episode. Thank you again, and I see you next week. God bless.